Jesus, my Lord. Psalm 34 verse 19, there we said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all, not some, all. I'm confident today that every affliction that may have buffeted your home, your family, your career, your marriage, the God of heaven will deliver you from them all. Let me hear your loud amen. Welcome to another edition of Real World Encounters in our journey in exploring Jeremiah chapter 29. Last week we considered Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 where Jeremiah declared the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? By God's grace this morning please turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1 and verse 2. Paul speaking he said finally brethren pray for us that the word of God may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Verse 2 said and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Paul said, pray that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Beloved, the unreasonable and wicked men that have decided to counter God's peaceful thought for you. But I'm confident that only God's counsel will stand in your life. Let me hear your loud amen. Unreasonable men, wicked men, they are everywhere seeking your downfall, seeking your failure, seeking words to come close to you. But I'm confident that whosoever digged the pit for you, he shall fall into it. Because it is not God's thought that you fall into a pit, it is God's thought that you have an expected end. Glory to God. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 1, there's an account that God called Abraham and said unto him, Get thee out of your father's house, out of your kitchen, to a land that I will show you. God's word came expressly to Abraham. And we are told in verse 4, Genesis 12 4, the Bible says that Abraham left and while he was living, Lot went with him. We were not told, it was not clear that it was Abraham that invited him. But we are told that Lot invited himself. Lot went with him. And you know the story that occurred. God had to intervene to cause a bad a separation between Lot and Abraham. In chemistry, we are made to understand that there are different techniques in separation. I pray that by divine intervention, there will be a separation between you and every Lot. There will be a separation between you and every unreasonable and wicked man, unreasonable and wicked woman that have been projected to counter God's good thought in your life in the name of Jesus speaking about separation technique who we are told of how God miraculously separated Israel from Egypt the story of the ten plagues we are all signs to show God's different separation techniques in enforcing his counsel in the life of his children I am confident today because God's thought for you is of peace and not of evil to bring you an expected end by divine manifestation the God of heaven will enforce a supernatural divine separation technique in your life that will bring a bad supernatural deliverance from everything that have attached itself to you against heaven's verdict. Let me hear your belief in amen. Hmm. We were told of wicked and unreasonable men in the book of Numbers chapter 22. Numbers 22, where you start reading from verse 7, who we are told how Balak of Moab decided to invite Balaam to come and curse God's people. God's people didn't mean him harm. God's people did him no harm. But he was afraid. He made up his mind to oppose them. He made up his mind to stop them. He made up his mind to curse them. He sent gifts to Balaam and said, come and curse these people for me. And God said, in verse 12 of Numbers 22, God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Thou shalt not curse the people, because I have peaceful thought for them. I have good thought for them to bring them to an expected end. God said this to Balaam, but Balak began to mount pressure on him. Balak began to mount pressure on him. A lot of gifts were coming his way. And behold, Balaam now went back to God and said, Should I go? And in verse 20, God said, If the men come to God, he rise up. 
Go with them. But yet the word which I sent to you, thou shalt do. Go with them. God had already told Balaam in verse 12, do not go. But Balaam kept on coming and coming and coming. Should I go? Should I go? Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 4 tells us, Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that set it up idols in his heart and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and comment to the prophet, I the Lord will answer him that comment according to the multitude of his idols. God has said, this is my standard. And you keep on coming because of one pressure or the other. He said, I will answer according to the multitude of the idols in your heart. And God said, I told you not to go, but you kept on coming. Okay, go. Make sure you don't cause them. At the end, was Balaam able to refuse the offer of Balak? No. In Joshua chapter 13, verse 22, Balaam, also the son of Baal, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the soul among them that were slain? Imagine a man that God speaks to, that speaks to God. He ended up as a soothsayer and he was slain. His life was cut short because he associated with unreasonable and wicked men. God thought for Balaam was for good to give him an expected end. But because of unreasonable Balak, because of wicked Balak, he ended before his time. I pray today that the effort and the activities of unreasonable and wicked men will not terminate God's good thought for you. Let me hear your loudest amen. There's an account in 2 Samuel chapter 15 from verse 12. And Absalom sent for Ahitophel, the Gidonite, David's counselor from his city. Absalom mustered an army against his father to take over the throne by force. And we were told that David had to run away. David ran with all those that were loyal to him because he did not want to confront his own son. David left the city and verse 12 said, Absalom, David's son, that plotted his revolt, sent for Ahitophel. Where was Ahitophel from? Ahitophel, the Gileonites. Who was Ahitophel? David's counselor. If Ahitophel was actually loyal to David as a counselor, he was supposed to have gone with David. He was supposed to have run away with David to give him counsel on how he can reclaim his throne. We we'll were told that Ahitophel was in his house. Was he not aware of the revolution? He was aware. The Bible said, from his city, even from Gideon, while he offered sacrifices, and the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. The conspiracy was strong. Last week, we were made to understand that more than 40 men came together in an evil conspiracy against Paul to kill him. They said they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. And now, we are seeing another strong conspiracy being masterminded by Absalom against his own father. Now, we are interested in is this. I hate to fail being introduced here as the castle of David, did not go with David. He was at home. He was at home. Absalom sent for him. This means there must have been an interaction and a communication and a discussion between Absalom and Ahitophel before this time. Ahitophel may have gotten news that this is what Absalom wanted to do. If not, Absalom would have not been so quick to send for him. Now, child of God, the Bible made me to understand that in verse 31 of 2 Samuel chapter 15, when it was told David that Absalom was with Ahitophel, David feared, David feared, David feared, ah, because he knew the potency of Ahitophel. Absalom gunned up against his father and he sent for it to fail. Psalm 20 verse 7 said, Some trust in child, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Psalm 146 verse 5 said, Happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope the Lord is. 
And Absalom decided to connive with Ahitophel. And David feared and he prayed. I love David. His fear moved him to God. We were told when they invaded Ziklag and he wept and wept and had no more strength to weep, he decided to inquire of the Lord. David's fears and disappointment always push him to the Lord. The scripture said, David cried out to the Lord and said, Oh God of Israel, turn the castle of Ahitophel to foolishness. It is recorded in Psalm chapter 50, verse 15. And call upon me the day of trouble, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Psalm 91, verse 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble, and deliver him, and honor him. Jeremiah 29, 12. Then shall he call me upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto him. David cried unto the Lord, told the counsel of Ahitophel, told foolishness. Child of God, there's something I want to draw your attention to. We were told in verse 12 of 2 Samuel chapter 15 that when Absalom sent messages to Ahitophel, Ahitophel was offering sacrifices. This may imply that he was a spiritual man because sacrifices for the physical thing is a spiritual thing. Ahitophel was offering sacrifices when Absalom sent for him. Does this mean that Ahitophel was a spiritual man? In a way, yes, he was a spiritual man. How do I know this? Because we will be told in 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 23, that and the counsel of Ahitophel, which he would counsel in the days, was as if man had inquired at the oracle of God. And now we have been told the secret that he was offering sacrifices. That means he was a spiritual man. Being spiritual does not mean you are godly. So one that was offering sacrifices when they invited him in 2 Samuel chapter 16 verse 21. And Ahitophel said unto Absalom, Go into thy father's concubine, which he had left to keep thy house. Look at the abominable advice Ahitophel gave to Absalom. Ahitophel said, sleep with your father's concubine. Someone that was offering sacrifices. Someone that seems to be spiritual. How come he's not giving this demonic counsel? Can I share this with you? You may be spiritual doesn't mean that you are scriptural. Someone may be spiritual. It doesn't mean that that person is godly. Let me tell you. Spirituality is in twofold. You are either a scriptural person or you are a demonic person. So don't be swayed when agents of darkness appear as angels of light. Don't be swayed when someone that speaks the language of the church deceives you and begins to manifest himself to you. The fact that it is spiritual does not make it scriptural. The fact that somebody is able to tell you your past does not mean the person is using the spirit of God. The fact that somebody can tell you what you are thinking in your heart does not mean he or she is a prophet of God. Hear me and hear me clearly. The fact that that person is spiritual does not mean it is scriptural. That is why it is not what they say that is the basics. God's word remains the standard forever, oh Lord. That word is settled. Now we will be told that the counsel of Ahitophel was as if you had inquired of the Lord. Look at the scripture. Any man that is from God will always have an encounter. God said this to this. God said this to that person. Even Balaam, we were told God spoke to him. But there was no account in the scripture where God spoke to Ahitophel. Yet, he was so respected and feared. There's something suspicious about this man, people of God. That means his ability was generated from another source. Because a man that is godly will not tell Absalom, sleep with the wives and the concubines of your father. He had his ability from another possibility. He had his credibility from another realm. We were told in the book of Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 verse 16. And it came to pass as they went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought the masters much gain by so saying. The same followed upon us and cried, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. Verse 18. And 
this she did many days. She was correct. There was accuracy in what she was saying. What she said was the truth. But Paul being grieved, Paul being grieved, not because of what she was saying, but because of what was powering what she was saying, because of the source from which what she was saying was coming from. Paul being grieved and told and said to the spirit, Paul did not speak to the gate. He said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out of her that same hour. She was precise. She was accurate. But what was giving her inspiration was the spirit of divination. I've come to conclude by the help of the Holy Spirit that what was giving Ahitophel such inspiration was not the spirit of God. It must have been the spirit of divination. The there was no account in the scripture where it was recorded that God spoke to Ahitophel. Yet he was the counselor of David. Yet he went, David went out and came in at his own counsel. I pray for you, every Ahitophel that seems to be spiritual, but they are not scriptural. Their advice looks spiritual, but it's not scriptural. Their counsel looks logical, but it's not scriptural. God separate you from them in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want to believe strongly that while Ahitophel was with David, he was pretending to him. He was a wicked and an unreasonable man. How do I know this? When David ran, he stayed back and connived with Absalom and gave Absalom instruction, saying, stay with the future father's concubine. As if that was not enough. In 2 Samuel 71, moreover, Ahitophel said to Absalom, let me now choose 12,000 men and I will arise and pursue after David this night. Imagine this is someone that has been a counselor to David now becoming an enemy of David a friendly friend a friendly friend every friendly friend whose ambition is to thwart God's peaceful thought for you whose ambition is to thwart God's good thought for you the judgment of God will fall upon them in the name of Jesus scripture speaking he said, the wicked will never go unpunished. How did Ahitophel die? Ahitophel, who were told, according to God's word, in 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23, remember, David had prayed to the counsel of Ahitophel to foolishness. So when Ahitophel counseled Absalom, Absalom did not take his advice. He took the advice of somebody else. And Ahitophel became ashamed. First Samuel 17:23. Ahitophel saw that his counsel was not followed. He saddled his ass and arose and got him to his house, to his city, and put his ass in order and hanged himself and died. And he was buried in the sepulchre of his father. He died a shameful death. No peace for the wicked. No peace for the wicked. Every Ahitophel that appears to be spiritual, but yet they are demonic, giving you cancer, pretending to be your friend. May the fire of God fall upon them in the name of Jesus. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 22. Touch not my note and do my prophet no harm. Psalm 105, verse 15. Touch not my note and do my prophet no harm. Proverbs 11, 21. Do hard join in hand. The wicked shall not go unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Because the plan of God, the thought of God for the righteous, is thought of peace and not of evil, to have an expected end. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. He gave us preparing for our wedding. And she had a very close friend. She called her, this my bestie, my bestie. Very close. And she introduced her bestie to her fiance. Most times when the fiance calls, she said, my bestie is there. Give the phone to the bestie. The bestie will speak with the fiance. They started interacting. Before you know, the fiance stopped picking her own call. And the end of the story went to us that his fiance got married to his bestie. Wicked and unreasonable men. The God of heaven will deliver us. The God of heaven will deliver us in the name of Jesus. Let me hear your loudest amen. The Bible is speaking in John chapter 2, verse 24. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. 
he knew all men. John 6, 26, Jesus said, very, very, I say unto you, you are not looking for me because you seek miracle. You are looking for me because you ate the other day and you were feed. You are looking for fish and bread. Many persons that are tagging along with you mean you no good. All they want is to benefit from you. The, the relationship is not complementary. The relationship is parasitic. May God deliver us from unreasonable men. May God deliver us from wicked men so that his good thought in our lives, so that his peaceful thought for us will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Even as God has privileged us to see a brand new month, the month of March, in this month, all that God has packaged for you will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Receive grace to take full delivery of what God has prepared for you. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Ghost, let me hear your believing hallelujah. In Matthew 21, 18 and 19, we're told of the story of the fig tree. Jesus saw the fig tree from afar and thought he could eat out of his feet. When he got close, he discovered that, ah, there's nothing here. And he caused the fig tree. There are so many persons, there are fig trees. They pretend to be what they are not. And Jesus caused the fig tree. Every situation that's like a fig tree around you, every personality that's like a fig tree around you, pretending to be what they are not, I decree today, they are caused in the name of Jesus. They are caused in the name of Jesus. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, we were told of a story how Ammon, the son of David, started to lust after his sister, Tamar. He didn't know what to do. He was in pain. The spirit of dust enveloped him. And his friend came. Second Samuel 35, a friend called Jonadab came and said, What is wrong with you? Why are you getting in the son of a king? And Ammon said to him, I love my sister. I don't know what to do. Jonadab, a wicked and unreasonable friend, gave him counsel that looked right. There's a way that seemed right unto a man. But the end there of our ways of death, I pray for you today. Everyone that we bring logical counsel that is not scriptural may that person be far from you in the name of jesus there's an account in acts chapter 13 verse 6 acts chapter 13 verse 6 we are paul and barnabas we are ministering to the deputy such as palos as he was ministering to them a man called bad jesus a man called elements was trying to turn away the deputy from the faith and paul looked at him and said ha ah, paul be filled with the holy ghost acts 39 set his eyes on him and said all food of subtlety and no mischief that child of the devil that enemy of all righteousness that would not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. This shall be the portion of every wicked and unreasonable man that has made it their point of duty to walk against your glory, to walk against your joy, to walk against your peace, to walk against your marriage, to work against your career, to work against your academics, to work against your destiny. In the name of Jesus, every unreasonable, every wicked man, every deceitful heart that have ganged up against God's cancer for you, I pray today, they shall be brought to naught. They shall be brought to naught. For I know the thought that I think towards you, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expectation. End. In this month of March, you will walk in God's peaceful thought. In this month of March, you will walk in God's provision. In this month of March, you will walk upon the high places of the earth. You are a high flyer, not a low ranger. You are a global champion, not a local champion. You are a celebrity, not a non-entity. You belong to the highest. You will never be a victim of the lowness of life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Man. Glory to Jesus. If you've not given your life to Christ, say, Jesus, I know you died and rose for me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sins. Give me a new life. Be my Lord. Forever and ever, give me grace to serve you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Lord, we thank you for Edo State. We thank you for the government of Edo State. Thank you for all government functionaries. May your hand rest upon them. In the name of Jesus, give them counsel. Give them grace to lead us aright. And may all that pertains to them be blessed. 
Thank you for the traditional institution. Thank you for the above being May your hand rest upon him. Oh Lord, thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for our leaders, Jehovah. Let only your curse stand. Every conspiracy against your divine plan will not see the light of day. Thank you for Africa. Thank you for the world. Let your peace prevail and let Jesus alone be seen. Oh Lord, every part of the earth that is yet to hear your word, let the glorious gospel of Christ find full expression. Let the word of God have free course in Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. You are blessed. You can reach us via our email, railboardencounter at gmail.com. Till I come your way next week, Monday. You are blessed. You are more than a conqueror. We're making it.